So welcome again, everybody. I'm Bob Birch, Web Technology Specialist with NDSU Ag Communication and a member of the NDSU Extension Innovation Team. This is our Tech Coffee Break uh, for May. Uh, you can join us for the Tech Coffee Break uh, every month, um, usually the first Monday of the month, uh, provided it's not a holiday or otherwise uh, a difficult day for people to attend. Um, if you want to learn more about the innovation team or if you're interested in joining the innovation team, you can learn more about what we do at www.ag.ndsu.edu slash innovation. Uh, or uh, you could just contact one of our members. Members who are on today include uh, Alicia Harstead and myself and Becky Koch. And I don't think I'm missing anybody else, but if I am, let me know in the chat if you're an innovation team member. and and on the call uh, so people can talk to you about what the innovation team does for NDSU Extension. And like I said, if you're interested in, in joining us and helping us out. Um, we're lucky enough today to have uh, Jerry Ranham on. Jerry is uh, with Egg Communication in our uh, uh, computers area. And uh, we invited him to talk a little bit about backing up your computer, some of the options that might be out there, and also to uh, take your questions in case you have specific questions that you'd like to ask about backing up. Um, and then, as usual, uh, once we've uh, sort of had that conversation, uh, we'll open it up to the floor for any of your questions or comments about technology, innovation, working differently, uh, or anything like that. So thanks again for joining us and welcome to the Tech Coffee Break, Jerry. Thanks, Bob. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is probably going to be a real short talk. Um, I can't, you know, for the most part, everybody understands the needs of a backup. So, you know, it's, it's really the basic concept is just getting a second copy of your data someplace else in case something catastrophic occurred. Uh, if your computer died or whatnot, <clears throat> Um, the trouble is, is a lot of people don't do it, um, and the, the unlucky ones find out that if it's possible to get the data back, sometimes it gets really expensive or time-consuming or both. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're just going to throw up some options on the screen here about what's available at NDSU for people. Some of them are free. Some of them cost a little bit of money. Uh, really depends on your situation as to which one will work best for you. There is no one best solution for everybody. And uh, yeah, so we'll just do that. We'll get started. Um, you know, at any point, if you got questions, let me know. I'm, you know, I, I have no prepared slides or anything except for just this list. So feel free to speak up. I'll just bring up the uh, the list here. Okay, can everybody see the uh, the screen? I've got it now, Jerry. Do you? Okay, thank you, Bob. Um, so, okay, so what you're seeing here, um, I want to say a quick thank you to Elizabeth Cronin. She worked with me to get this all set up. She did a fantastic job laying it out, uh, hunting down a lot of details. Um, and uh, for us technical guys, sometimes when we put this stuff together, it doesn't always make the most sense. So we really need people like her that can kind of uh, put it into a more usable format, and uh, she did a fantastic job. But um, to just kind of go over the, the basic ideas, there's really four different types of backup options. There's the cloud option, uh, the network drives, and depending on whether you're on or off campus, these will be different. Uh, external hard drives, and then little flash drives, thumb drives. Uh, each has their use. Um, none of them are perfect by any stretch. <clears throat> so we'll take a look at the first ones, the cloud backups. These are some of, uh, for the, the most general use, um, for most folks, this is probably going to be one of your best solutions. Uh, for number one, it's free. The university pays for all the costs to accessing these. And uh, so we have OneDrive for Business and the Google Drive, and then we also call it GStream. That's the software you use to install it on your computer to access it. Uh, both of these contain uh, files in the cloud accessible through the web and through your computer. Um, as you can see under the space requirements, OneDrive gives us up to one terabyte of space. Uh, Google Drive is actually unlimited, or if you want to get really technical, they start talking in exabytes, which we won't even get into that. It's huge. Um, but yeah, so quite a bit of space for most people. Either one of these should be able to hold pretty much everything you have on your hard drive. 
Um, and that really is the key is you have to determine how much data you have that you need to back up what's critical. So that is what you need to shoot for when you're looking at drive sizes and determining what types of backups you want. Uh, again, with the cloud option, uh, both of these are free through NDSU or NDUS. Um, and then there's a number of pros. Um, they both do automatic backup and synchronization from your computer. When you use those, uh, when you use your data and you put it in your OneDrive for Business folder or your Google Drive folder, um, it just automatically takes care of it, sends it up to the cloud and stores a copy there. It synchronizes every time you connect to the internet. Um, very handy. Um, takes away a lot of the extra manual labor that you'll find with some of the other options. The, uh, again, the data is stored online and off-site. And you'll find that this is important when you start thinking fire, flood, tornado. Uh, some of the other options do a great job of having a second copy, but a lot of times they end up staying in the same office. And when they're in that same office, again, um, disaster strikes, disaster will strike. So it's kind of, uh, you have to determine what kind of risk you're willing to take when it comes to backups as well. Uh, just to point out a couple of things here in the pros, OneDrive meets requirements for both HIPAA and FERPA data. So health information and the family employment data that both covered under federal law, OneDrive will, will allow you to use those without violating any laws. Uh, in terms of Google Drive, FERPA only, so no health type information. Now, I don't know that many folks in extension actually use that type of information, but um, just on the off chance you do have access to it or you work with something like that on a confidential nature, this is something you'll want to pay attention to. And then again, moving on to the cons column, just one terabyte limitation on OneDrive. Uh, so Google Drive offers more, but to be quite honest, even one terabyte isn't much of a con. Most of us don't have a hard drive any larger than that, so it really should suit our needs for the most part. Uh, moving on to the network drives, a little bit different scenario. So we'll talk about the campus drives first. And as you can see in the column, we have the U, the S, and the X drives. And they're, uh, the U drive is your personal drive. It's you only you have access to it. Uh, that's 10 gigs of space. The S drive is a shared drive among uh, departmental different departments. And we have 100 gig there, but in reality, the S drive can change depending on the number of people in a department. They may actually allocate more if you have a department that's quite large. So that number might be a little different for each of you. And then the X drive, again, this one is 10 gig, and that one is the cross-departmental. That's the one that's used across uh, the entire College of Agriculture and Extension here on campus. Um, those are the default uh, amounts. And then as it says, you know, you can increment those. Um, it costs uh, 55 cents a gigabyte. And uh, yeah, that's an annual fee. Um, just to go back up to point out the cloud solutions, um, this brings up a good point. Uh, there is no known way to upgrade like that terabyte on OneDrive. So one terabyte is the limit all the time there in case you were wondering. Uh, moving on to the pros on the network drives. Uh, data, data is accessible online if you manually map it. Um, that does apply to the campus drives. Uh, data is stored off-site. Also, again, campus drives. And they meet HIPAA and FERPA requirements. Um, so, again, safe place to keep your stuff. Now, in regards to county and uh, REC network drives, this doesn't necessarily apply. In some cases, you may be able to access those drives off-site but in many cases, you may not be able to. It depends on who the administrator is. Uh, the Agcom Computer Services works with most of the RECs to do this, but we do not work with a lot of the counties. It's very rare for us to run a county server. Most of that's done by the Association of Counties or the NRG, and uh, they generally handle it a little differently than we do, so it's, it's really hard to say what the access is there. Um, in both set in uh, both cases, county and REC, I would not make any uh, assumptions that you can store HIPAA or FERPA data on those. Um, again, the ones that we don't control, we can't guarantee that they've been hardened to the point where they're considered uh, allowable for that type of information. The RECs are definitely not. Um, and the data um, for our backups on, say, the REC servers, they're actually stored on site. So they do not have the off-site data storage as well. Um, and again, going to the cons for the on-campus, no automated backup. And what we're saying there is there's no automated way to get it from your PC to there, so you'll manually copy your files over. A lot of people may just 
move them over and just work with them out or while they're in those drives. And that would probably be your best bet in those cases. Um, and then if you're on Windows 7, as you've probably noticed, we have a new method of connecting. It's not nearly as much uh, fun as the old one. Um, unfortunately, there were some changes made to how the servers operate that uh, necessitated the change. But, um, yep, so you'll still need to continue to use that. Excuse me. <clears throat> so outside of, of networking cloud, now we're going to talk about um, just physical devices. And uh, the probably the primary one you'll see people using is an external hard drive. A lot of people will go buy one, sit on their desk, plug it into their computer, and set up some software to automatically back up to it nightly or weekly. Um, this works great just to have a second copy. Um, I wouldn't recommend this for anything that's of high importance because, again, it's still sitting in your office. It's not like the cloud where it's out somewhere else. Um, but just for general stuff. It's great. It's just a second copy in case your hard drive dies and you need something quick, or if it's something that um, you know you absolutely have to have, it never hurts to have another copy. Um, external hard drives, they, they vary in size, they vary in price. So we've kind of looked at them, and for one terabyte, you can get them from anywhere to $50 to $80. And the reason for the range is it depends on what type you like. You can get the small little USB ones. They're a lot slower, but they just have one... Uh, one plug that you plug into the computer, and away you go, and that's kind of nice for travel. Um, if you want something a little faster, a little bigger, um, they generally run a little more. They're probably closer to the $80 mark. Um, then, of course, you move up, you get up to, like, the 4 terabyte, for example, and now you're looking around 100 to 150, possibly even more, depending on um, speed of the hard drive, the brand, the warranty, things like that. Uh, the pros on these types, you can be configured to back up data on a schedule. Uh, you can store fairly large amounts of data. Um, again, when we talk about how much you, should you get, you should always get a drive big enough to back up everything on your drive that's important to you. Um, that's really the key is just making sure you got a second copy of that data. Um, some of the cons, I mean, there's a bunch here. I guess the ones I want to point out are it doesn't meet requirements of HIPAA, FERPA. Um, again, you're looking at your, your threat assessment. You know, if you have a fire flood tornado, this is not going to do you a lot of good unless you take that drive home with you at night. Um, yep, subject to wear and tear. And, uh, yeah, your computer has to be turned on. Something else we don't have in there, just something to keep in mind. If you ever have a power surge that will knock out your computer, if this thing's plugged into your computer and plugged into the into the wall, chances are it will get knocked out as well. So just one more, one more reason to have alternative backups or take this thing offline at night, take it home with you, however, you know, whatever works for you. Um, and then finally, the one that I would recommend the least is flash drives, little thumb drives. Um, these vary in size all the way up to two terabytes. Uh, you do not want to know what a two terabyte will cost. Kingston came out with them last year, and I think they, they run north of $1,200 a piece, which is just absolutely insane. Um, but for a normal size one, you're looking somewhere in the tune of uh, 64 to 128 gig. And you can get those, as you can see here, 20 to 30 for a 64 gig, around 30 to 50 for a 128. And again, it depends on the manufacturer, the speed, the warranty. They make difference in the price. Um, they're very portable, they're very affordable, and they're very losable, if that's a word. You, they're easy to lose. Um, you don't want to put anything important on there, nothing confidential, because this is how a lot of data breaches happen with companies. This or external hard drives, people take them with them. It has something critical. It gets lost or stolen. Um, just something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's that's kind of what we've got. I talked really fast. I kind of read off the screen here. But um, this this really is kind of the, the points we like to make about each of these. Um, yeah, at this point, I guess let's, if we could take some questions, that would probably be a good place to start. And maybe we'll, you know, it might be something I missed that will spark my thinking here. So anyone have any questions? Thanks, Jerry. You can, if you have a question, type it in the chat or turn on your microphone. Um, there's not a ton of us here, so go ahead and open up your microphone, interrupt me, and and uh, you can ask uh, Jerry your question. I see a couple people are are typing. So Becky's asking, did anyone else see the Big Bang Theory episode where Sheldon saved their Bitcoin info on Leonard's Batman flash drive? He'd lost it years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one. That was a good one. <laughs> Uh, it was it was all right. It's typical Big Bang Theory. <laughs> so yeah, a couple other other people typing. Uh, 
while we're getting those to come in, Jerry, can you talk a little bit about uh, using the cloud drive? So typically, in my experience, you have a f kind of a folder that you set up that uh, does the syncing for you? Or are there different ways to kind of configure that uh, to say to back up to either OneDrive or Google Drive? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so when you're looking at OneDrive and Google Drive, uh, they basically just have practically fire and forget software. I mean, there's a little configuration there. Um, not a lot of settings in terms of customization, at least not that I'm aware of. Now, there may be someone that uses this stuff a lot more than me that could chime in and might know something I don't. I'm by all means no super expert on it. But um, <clears throat> what I've found with uh, with OneDrive is you set it up and it just works, um, or it doesn't. Um, but yeah, not a lot of customization in terms of that. You, you're supposed to be able to turn syncing on and off. That's always been kind of a little bit of a trouble spot sometimes. Most people it works for them. Uh, we've had a few people where we've, we've kind of struggled with some of that. Um, but outside of just setting up the, the software where it's just kind of the standard install, the other way to go about it, which, and, um, and the other way to go about it without using the software, you can always work on it from the web aspect. You can log in using the web interface, uh, especially OneDrive, which is really nice because it uses the Office 365 setup. So you can go into those files, open it up. You have Word Online, Excel Online, and actually you can open those files with the, the Word and Excel on your computer as well. Um, Google Drive, you know, honestly, I've never tried to open them up from my computer uh, other than in the, the folder the software generates. Um, has anyone else used that from the web, perhaps, that might be able to speak up to that a little bit? Okay. <laughs> So I, I don't have a lot of experience on the website of Google Drive, um, so I really couldn't say much there. But uh, yeah, I I don't know if that answered your question, Bob, or if that was kind of what you're looking for. Well, well, there's a couple other questions here, so maybe those will help uh, get a little bit more to the to the details. So Lindy's asking, how do you start moving things to the cloud? So you've chosen one OneDrive or Google Drive. Like, what's your next step? Okay. Well, I guess it depends on whether you want it to auto-sync from your computer, um, which most people will find that to be a bonus. Uh, now, I do want to mention one thing about the auto-sync on the computer. Some people will think if I put my files in the cloud, they're going to be stored in the cloud. They're also stored if you use the synchronization software like the OneDrive for Business software or the uh, GStream software. Those files are also stored on your computer. Um, and Becky might want to chime up here. Uh, she had a she and I had worked on this one time where there was a situation where she had more files that would probably fit on her hard drive in the cloud. So you have to be kind of careful with that because um, the synchronization, make sure you have a copy locally and a copy in the cloud. If you want to work just in the cloud, then you'll have to do the web, the web version of it. Um, but Jerry, that's not the case anymore. When we tried mine as the very initial one, I think I was the first one you guys did, there was a limit to the number of files, so that's the only reason we had trouble because I had so freaking many photos and everything. Oh, but yours was a. I thought yours was a size uh, space issue. Sorry, no, Becky. No, mm -mm. it was the number of files before they upped it. And now I'll give my testimonial. I absolutely love OneDrive. I don't have to think about it. Everything is automatically synced. I just create my document and it's on my laptop and it's in the cloud. I absolutely love it. I don't have to worry. I don't have to remember to do anything. Everything is in Word or PowerPoint. So there's my little testimonial. Thank you. So Becky, do you have, um, so what parts of your computer does it back up? Does it back up your entire C drive or only things in a certain spot? I think only the files, not the software itself, so not mm -hmm. the entire C drive. You're right. And again, that was partly because I had so many photos. But that's what I wanted backed up, too, and not have to worry about losing photos. Right. I'd have to look again. It's been a while since we did that. But it took days for it to do the initial sync. But once it did that initial sync, now just zip and it's saved and I don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. 
So I can go to anybody else's computer and go to Office 365 and find my file, or I can not be on Wi-Fi and find it on my laptop. And if I edit either one of them, the next time I log in, it gives me the latest version as soon as it syncs. So, Jerry, uh, I was pulling a couple of links from NDSU ITS uh, that oh, okay. provide some more information and putting them in the chat. So I, di I have to confess to not being completely attentive to what you're saying. So did you see Alicia's question and Taylor's question? You may have already addressed those. I, I haven't yet. We were I was just about to. Um, I just wanted to follow up on Lindy's one more time. We've, we've kind of talked about it, but just so we're clear, if you're running the software, there is a folder that's generated. You just copy those files into that folder, and it'll sync for you, which was what Becky was also saying. Um, but, yeah, so the, um, the question on the situation where the cloud would fail you, uh, pretty rare in terms of the cloud actually losing your data because they have multiple data centers that they keep this stuff at. So they have redundancies built in all over the country. Uh, in terms of Google, they have redundancies all over the world, which is why you can't have HIPAA information on the Google servers is because they're not contained in the United States. They don't guarantee that information like Microsoft does. Um, but also, there, and, and I hesitate to bring this up because I don't want to get people nervous about this. This is really not common. But if your computer was ever in infected with a crypto virus you've you've seen the ones where they'll infect and they have a countdown and demand payment a ransomware type thing um something like that that affects your computer where it encrypts all your files when it auto syncs those files get encrypted and it'll auto encrypt them on the cloud side too so again like we were saying no backup solution is perfect that's really the only concern i have about the cloud ones especially if you're doing synchronization on your computer because if if you weren't, then you'd have to have internet access every time you want to get those files. But again, the, the, the risk is slight. Run a good antivirus, things like that. You know, the same thing we always talk about. And chances are you're going to be just fine. Um, we have not had one person yet in NDSU that's had that happen. If that makes you feel better, I don't want to get people too concerned about it. Um, I just want to throw it out there that synchronization, every change you make to your file gets made in the cloud. So you need to make sure that those changes are something you want to be making. Um, then the uh, question about OneDrive, are there accounts with passwords and security measures? Um, the OneDrive is actually tied to your NDUS account. So uh, you'd have to log into your uh, Office 365 with your login and password in order to be able to use it. I'm not sure if, uh, if that's answering your question, uh, Taylor. So if it's if you have uh, if that didn't if that wasn't clear or if uh, if I'm missing the point, please let me know and I'll be happy to to uh, revise my answer a little bit here. Okay, cool. Um, you're welcome. Is there anybody else that has questions I might be able to answer? Um, Anybody have any stories maybe they'd want to share about some disaster that befell them? Maybe to let people know what, what kinds of things could happen? Well, I'll share I'll, one. I uh, Oh, go, go ahead, please. Jerry. Sorry. No, go ahead. I was just going to say Ag Communication had a couple major fails. It's been years ago, but ever since then, Part of everybody's responsibility review, I usually remember to ask, and how are you backing up, and how often are you doing it? It's part of the annual review to remind everybody we've got to do this, because there's stuff to this day that occasionally those two staff people will say, oops, that was before my crash, and it's gone. Yep, and we've had other people in other departments that have done the same thing. We've had people that have lost dissertations or even a thesis. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, you know, you don't know what to tell them. We have software. We can try to pull data back. The trouble is, is if you have an actual physical damaged hard drive, physically damaged, uh, you can't always pull data back. Sometimes it's just not possible with the equipment we have here. Um, we had one young lady, she was a grad student, she had a lot of her research on a, on a drive that died, had no backup. 
and they ultimately ended up having to send it into a recovery center where they pull the drive apart physically and try to read the platters off the drive in a special device they had in a clean room, which, of course, none of that is cheap. And I think they ended up spending over $1,200 to get this data pulled, and they, if I remember right, they got back about 50% of what they needed. And, and that was actually a good result. I've known people personally that have had absolutely nothing recovered, even though they spent $1,000 or more. So backups are a very cheap way to avoid all that. No headaches. You can continue working. Um, they're great. Any other questions for Jerry? Again, you can, if you don't want to type in the chat, you can just open your microphone, just unmute. And... Um, well, this is Alicia. I guess I have just tried to back up my files with both OneDrive and Google Drive. The one thing that I've I've learned though with Google Drive is I can't get my NDSU Google Drive information on my phone. I have an Android, so that would be a one I thing I would say is maybe a disadvantage of Google Drive versus OneDrive, um, just because it's another place to have your files. If for whatever reason you end up doing a presentation somewhere, you know I always have my phone with me, but I might not always have my computer or something else with. Good point, Alicia. Anyone else questions or comments? Well, awesome. Thanks, Jerry. That was really informative. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to join us on the Tech Coffee Break. Oh, thank you for having me. It was uh, always glad to help out. Anyone else have just general questions, things you want to share, uh, small victories, uh, challenges that you're facing, anything uh, that you want to talk over uh, regarding technology, innovation, or anything else? How are things going for you? Can I jump in there quick, Bob? Please do, Joe. Oh, sorry, Greg. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I was just on that last webinar with you, but uh, on the OneDrive, I list, I heard Alicia say that she was having trouble with her Google, and I have my Outlook on my Android phone, and I have my OneDrive on my Android phone, but I tried to link my Google Drive on there, and same problem, I couldn't do it because I wanted to do it for that grazing readiness that Miranda Meehan on, had on there. So I could just upload the stuff straight from the field instead of... So I'm having trouble with that. But as far as the OneDrive and my Outlook and everything are working really well as far as keeping files and stuff on my phone. And that's all I got. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, I haven't tested... I haven't tried to use NDSU Google Drive on my phone. So that's... Uh, I, I kind of remember. I, I hesitate to say it because I only half remember seeing something about... Um, from ITS, uh, NDSU ITS about that, maybe not working or not being allowed, but um, I'll see if I can check into that some more and we'll see if we can share some information either on a future Tech Coffee Break or on the Innovation Team blog. Yeah, well, I, I've talked to um, ITS at NDSU and they said it was something with, the, I think it's something with the new security stuff with the new NDUS, all that kind of stuff. There's something that for security reasons, it, it, it just doesn't seem to jive with the um, Google Drive app that I have or that you have for your phones. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions or comments? I see Becky's typing, so I'll wait for that. Oh yeah, make sure that you have a backup plan and talk to your coworkers about it. Good advice. Hopefully we don't end up losing any more data in the future. There's looks like uh, Jerry shared some great options out there. So, all right, everybody, thanks again for joining us for the Tech Coffee Break. Uh, remember to check out what's going on with the NDSU Extension Innovation Team at www.ag.ndsu.edu/innovation. You'll also find a link there to our NDSU Extension Innovation Facebook group. If you're not already a member of that, you may want to join. Uh, contact any innovation team member 
Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the innovation team, uh, I mentioned Alicia's on here, myself, Becky, uh, since we uh, said that. Uh, Caitlin Hain is also uh, joined, and, and Caitlin's on the team as well, and TJ Pro, uh, Prochaska too. So, uh, yeah, reach out. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, otherwise, thanks. Have a great day.